This video is the basis for a series that will build on production car aerodynamic analysis using CFD. In these cases, the fluid simulations will be used to highlight key aerodynamic modifications that production cars have to either decrease drag or increase downforce. The plan for this series is to use the same model and develop it according to some competition specifications, either from a simple improved production car modifications up to something more extreme like Time Attack or 2021 WRC. This car is modeled on the Suzuki Swift, or apparently the Cultus, which is a terrible name. It shapes it as well as a generic model for a hatchback to be experimented with. The car itself is small and relative to the time aerodynamic, with a drag coefficient of 0.38. An interesting aspect of this car was the addition of the body kit for the GTI version, which forms this first comparative analysis. To start, the basic aerodynamic characteristics for the hatchback will be defined in running the first simulation case. A second case will add a flap above the rear window just like the GTI body kit. That will alter the basic aerodynamics and give clues to as the next video's improvements will be derived. Establishing the basic aerodynamic characteristics of the hatchback will allow for coherent developments to be built upon. A note is that the addition of a flap is ambiguous on most, if not all, hatchbacks. A change from the preceding videos on this channel is the version of OpenFoam used here. The switch is from OpenFoam.org to OpenFoam.com because this allows for the use of adaptive mesh refinement in a particular method recently developed by Airshaper. I'll link the details in below for those who want to dig into it. But the idea is that the final mesh uses results from the initial run, refining the mesh in areas around the model. From the first run, changes in either pressure or flow direction known as curl an iteration of the meshing process is made to decrease the mesh size in the volume where the threshold values have been met. It might be worthwhile doing a tutorial style video on the method to complement Joseph Nugg's wiki entry also linked below. This method is a significant advancement for meshing with snappy hex mesh. The difference is rather than refining the whole volume, only part of the volume is highly refined to mesh. This saves a large amount of computational resources as each voxel needs to be computed. So despite the need to run the simulation essentially twice, you are calculating 9 million cells instead of 40 million. Now the base case. The car as mentioned was modeled on the Suzuki Swift sold around the world. It has a typical for 1980s exceptionally rough floor, which is modeled along with a simplified engine bay. Looking at the underside of the floor pan, it has large indentations. All the exhaust and fuel tank is exposed, the worst being the beam axle hanging out in the breeze. All this geometry will be very draggy. Taking a slice through the middle of the domain, the amount of turbulence created by everything under the car is apparent. Clearly, this is an aerodynamic problem. The total pressure, or energy the air has, shown from the perspective of the car taking energy out of the fluid domain, inverse to the real world where the car is moving putting energy into the air as it passes. For example, the velocity map shows the air decreasing in the same way, removing kinetic energy. Apparent here is the problem with the rear axle beam. Behind the car is where the most of the drag is created with a significant wake. Similar to the well-known armoured bluff body experiment, there are two counter-rotating vortices being shed from the sloping back. The simplified car as a bluff body has an aspect, the sloping rear, that is relevant to hatchbacks. The study shows when the air separates from the rear window slope, drag and lift increase significantly. These counter-rotating vortices on the hatchback are very similar, and therefore a similar conclusion about drag can be claimed. Though the stream tracing is seated underneath the car, an image of the rear window with a line integrated convolution, LIC, is used here as a graphic to indicate the rotation is caused by the sloping rear. Clearly the airstream underneath the car is strongly interacting with the rear. This will be looked at more closer later with the addition of the rear flap. Adding the rear flap, this is the only modification made to this model. It is therefore the flap above the rear window that is responsible for the large changing force outputs. The drag is reduced by 11% and the lift by almost 60%. The coefficient goes from a CDA of 0.58 to 0.51. With the frontal area being about 1.5 square meters, it is close to the reference coefficient of 0.38. The drag reduction of 10% is massive, and it isn't any wonder why all, or close to all, hatchbacks have this simple addition. The 3D animation shows the difference in the wake. The strong counter-rotating vortex structures shared by the first case have been significantly weakened. 
For the base case in the foreground, there is two distinct flows, whereas with the addition of the flap, there is far less rotating air. Taking a look from underneath, the streams are picked up far more energetically in the base case. Looking at the centerline plots are the most interesting for me, though that doesn't seem to be the case for everybody. It might be assumed that under the car is the same, going by the slice colour maps. That is far from the case. The slices with the total pressure, all the major differences is behind the window, but the plot from underneath the car shows a significant enough difference. There's more energy in the air for the second case, suggesting the velocity and pressure is higher, which they are. However, it is mostly the pressure. What is interesting is the pressure in both cases is negative, apart from in front of the axle hanging in the breeze. Wrapping this up, removing 110 newtons of lift traveling at 30 meters per second or 108 kilometers per hour would make a significant difference in safety, as most of this comes from the top and rear of the car. Underneath, there is actually downforce produced. Despite the modifications, the car still has positive lift, and it is likely that most of this is from the rear. Therefore, changing something in the rear is the next step in improving the aerodynamics, which will be the next video.